Hello, I'm Larry Hessian from Backwater Motors. And I'm Jay Gilk, and we're going to show you how simple it is to assemble the Backwater Swamp Light Glider Kit. We're going to start by uh, checking your engine, making sure that the crankshaft length is proper for the kit. Now we've supplied this gauge in with the kit and you just need to hold it up against the, the crankcase of the engine, making sure that the crankshaft is the equal length as the gauge. The next thing we want to do is check to make sure that the bolts that we supplied aren't too long for the motor. So we'll stick a, a tool or a keyway in the engine and we'll pull it out and check it with a bolt making sure that the bolt is not too long. Now let's go ahead and uh, install the keyway. <coughs> what you want to do when you install the keyway is you want to clean out, clean the keyway and the keyway slot on the engine. We usually like to use a little rubbing alcohol to do that. And we also like to take a little blue Loctite and put it on the keyway when you install it to help hold it in there. And then when Larry taps that in, you'll see that he takes a piece of steel and holds it underneath the crankshaft. You can also use another hammer or something like that. That helps support the drive shaft. We'll wipe off the excess Loctite. So now we're ready to uh, slide the coupler onto the output shaft. So as we're sliding this on, we're using the rubber mallet. Now you want to check and make sure that the crankshaft and the drive shaft are touching and you should be able to see that through the split in the coupler. We're going to tighten these two bolts to 125 inch pounds. And you put a little blue Loctite on those as well to ensure that they won't come loose. Okay, now we'll slide the uh, lower unit onto the engine. And here again, we're just going to use a drop or two of Loctite on these bolts to ensure they won't rattle loose. Now I like to um, install just two bolts first and check the lower unit to make sure that we have the proper amount of drive shaft sticking out. I like to get the bolts started into the engine three, four rounds to make sure they're not cross threaded. And we're just gonna snug these bolts up, not too tight. Then we're going to go to the lower end and measure to make sure that we have the proper length crankshaft. So now you'll notice that the lower bearing housing cap is not actually on there. But without that on, you take and measure and you should have four inches. And that's the measurement that you want to have. If it's more than four inches, then you know that you're probably going to need to cut more output shaft off your engine and slide your drive shaft further up. Or if it's less, you're going to need to leave a space in between your output shaft and the drive shaft of the lower unit. Now we'll install the last two bolts into the bell housing using the blue Loctite. Once again, I always like to start the bolt two or three threads before using a ratchet to make sure that you don't cross thread the bolt into the engine.
Now these bolts will get torqued to 140 inch pounds. All right, so back here on the bottom end, we're all attached, the bell housing's attached up on the engine. What we need to do is install the Revel Clean cap onto the bearing housing itself. So before I start that, what I want to do is take a little bit of grease and put it on your seals. What that does is make sure you don't wreck your seals on installation. And what we like to do is actually turn them on with the threads as you're putting your cap. You don't just want to push it on. When you get up here to the Revel Clean groove itself, you know, it turns into left-handed threads. And also, the threads on the bearing housing cap and the bearing housing itself are left-handed threads. Before I get there, I'm going to use a, a little bit of liquid thread sealant. <clears throat> uh, if you have that, that's great. Teflon tape will work, or even a little bit of petroleum jelly or something like that will help ensure that you have a good seal. Take the pliers, and snug that cap up. The next step is to install your first jam nut. So you can see we got about an eighth inch space in between the bearing housing cap and the jam nut itself. Then you want to take and install your prop. Get that started. Alrighty, the next step is to install the crush sleeve. The brass bushing, or the brass portion that's visible, goes towards the prop. This doesn't get used with all size props, but most of them it does. Then you take another jam nut, tighten that on, use your wrench, tighten that, and then goes another jam nut, which is also a nylock. The next step will be to install the cavitation plate. Now if you notice, there's eight holes in the brace. Now the back holes are used when you don't have a shim or if you use a shim and the larger part of the shim is towards the back. The front holes are only used if the larger part of the shim is towards the front. So what we'll do is we'll take our plate and if you notice there's a gasket on the plate. The gasket is on there to ensure a tight fit onto the drive tube that makes it weedless. Now we'll simply slide the cavitation plate down the brace, which will reveal the holes that you will be using, which in this case are the rear holes. So what I will do is put a drop of Loctite into each hole and onto each bolt. Now I always like to install the 
front bolt first. So what we're going to do is snug this bolt down and then just simply tap the plate to ensure that the gasket is touching the drive tube. Now these bolts will get torqued to 70 inch pounds. Now anytime you remove the bolts to install a shim, we recommend re-loctiting the bolts. So with the cavitation plate installed, let's go and install the transom mount onto the boat as well as the engine. Now we'll install the transom mount onto the boat. If you notice, these are the transom bolts that will snug the transom mount onto your boat and they need to be on the inside of the boat. Now we'll take a tape measure and make sure that the transom mount is in the center of the transom. Now Jake, if you would, please snug up the bolts. Now this transom mount is designed to be drilled onto the boat. If you notice, there's four holes on the back of the mount the center two holes is the ones that we like to use, but in the event that you have a center brace, you will need to either use one or both of the outside bolts. Now the next step is to make sure that your transom swivel plate is in the right position. This is your hauling position and the other two are for safety. So we want it to be into the running position which will give you 180 degrees of running without the pull pin plunger engaging. So next, we're going to install the engine onto the boat. We're going to put a light film of grease in the bushings. And also into the bell housing of the engine. And we'll simply slide the bolt into the bell housing. And install the nylock nut. Alrighty, now we're ready to install the handle mount assembly. What's important to do is make sure that the handle clamping bolts are facing forward. You can hold that under the engine and take your 3 8 bolt and slide it through. There's washers on both sides of these. Install the washer again. Take your other bolt with the washer. Now, as I said, these are 3 8 bolts, but if for some reason they weren't to fit through your engine holes, just take a 3 8 drill bit and drill those out. Then these bolts get torqued to 230 inch pounds.
with our handle mount assembly installed, we're going to go ahead and install the handle. So, as you can see here on the assembly, there's the through bolt and the pinch bolt. What I'm going to do here is take out the through bolt. And slide the handle in. So with the combination of the through bolt and the pinch bolt, what you get is a very safe handle. The through bolt keeps it from twisting or pulling out, and the pinch bolt secures it down to stop any vibration. So with that through bolt there, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten that up. I like to tighten that first. And then move on to the pinch bolt. The pinch bolt is what ensures that there's no movement in the handle. Before I start tightening the pinch bolt, you can see the movement. It's important to tighten the pinch bolt until there is no more movement. As you can see, no more movement. So now with the handle installed, what you want to do is fill your engine with oil, attach your throttle cable, and wire the kill switch according to your engine manufacturer's specifications. From all of us at Backwater, we'd like to thank you for watching the assembly video of the Swamp Light Glider Kit. And remember, if you have questions about any of our products, be sure to contact us.